Okay, today let's talk about sound. We've talked about the image, we've talked about the camera, we've talked about editing. But what do you do with your ears when you watch a movie? So the most obvious thought is probably that we want the sound to sound realistic, to convince us that these things that we're seeing are really happening. If you make a movie indoors, uh, that's easier, right? You just hook up a, a microphone and you capture the sound along with the image. But even indoors, sometimes the sound in the background is not the sound that you want. When you move around a space, you create lots of noises, but not all of those noises are what you want the audience to focus on. For example, if you have a scene of someone walking through an office, uh, if you want to emphasize uh, the kind of floor and the atmosphere of the space, you may want to uh, emphasize the footsteps, the sounds of their walking. If you want to emphasize the people in the space, you might want to uh, focus on the sound of people talking in the background. Uh, so even when you have a live microphone, you still need to adjust the volume of the different sounds that you want to focus on. But if you're shooting outside on location, then it becomes an even bigger problem. Uh, if you've ever made a video outdoors, you will know that uh, there are so many different sounds that you don't want, including uh, the sound of the wind. The sound of the wind is extremely noisy and very annoying. Have you ever seen a movie where people are talking outdoors and you can hear the wind in the microphone? Never, right? Because the sound of the wind usually does not have meaning. It's just noise. So when you shoot a movie outdoors, usually what happens is uh, the actual shooting will only focus on capturing the images. And the sound is all later re-recorded and recreated in a studio. Uh, so the actors uh, will be presented with a loop of the scene and they try to catch the rhythm of their original acting and they say the dialogue into a microphone to match how it looks like on the screen. Uh, that's called ADR, Additional Dialogue Recording. The background noises also. If they're outdoors and you hear the sound of like tree leaves and the sound of nature and birds, those are also recorded at a different time and then put onto the image. Now, uh, usually if you want to hear the artificial sounds of human society, like walking, rustling, moving, shifting, bumping, breaking, uh, shattering, punching. These kinds of sounds are individually created. Uh, and this is why if you really think about it, the sound of things happening in a movie usually sound very different from how they actually sound in real life. Uh, for example, if you're uh, shooting a scene where the actor is in bed and they turn over in bed. If you're lying in bed and you turn over, it's very quiet. You basically, there's no significant sound. But in that kind of scene, you might want to emphasize how quiet it is. And so you might want to add the sound of um, rubbing against fabric, against the, the covers, or like the sound of hair on the pillow. These sounds all have to be created in a studio. And the way that uh, the, this is called Foley, named after the guy who invented this idea. The way that people create Foley sounds can be very different from how, uh, from what creates that sound in the uh, original situation. So for example, if you have like a, an actor wearing high heels walking across a wooden floor, like the clock, 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 that kind of sound, that may be recorded using wooden blocks smashing into each other. 
instead of having actual shoes on an actual floor. Uh, the sound of someone punching someone else may not come from an actual punch. They may have like a, uh, a bat or a club and they might be hitting a sandbag. Uh, so the idea is not to create sounds that are exactly the same as real life. The idea is to create sounds that are convincingly real, that make you think and feel like this is real. So this is the first step in creating uh, sound and sound effects to actually record it on tape. But then you have to add it to the image. And when you add it to the image, there are two things to focus on. The first is timing. You want to make sure that the sound comes at the exact moment that the audience expects the sound. Again, this may not be the same as in real life depending on how ready the audience is for that moment or for that image, the sound might come exactly that time. It might come a little bit later. It might even come a little bit earlier. The other thing to focus on is the volume. This is called the mix, and it's called a mix because there are many different sounds happening at the same time. So there are people talking, there's background noises, there's specific sound effects. How loud do you want each sound to be compared to the other sounds? Again, this depends on what you want your audience to focus on. Uh, I know that some uh, directors and sound editors are so detailed that they will adjust the sound mix for every single shot. Now remember, uh, the camera, the film camera traditionally captures 24 frames per second. So in every second, there are 24 shots. And these directors adjust the sound for every single shot, 24 times per second. Uh, so when you really get down to it, the, the sound can be a very detailed and specific thing to deal with on a film. Now these are just the sound effects. These are the sounds that the characters hear and the characters say, but there are other sounds that maybe the characters don't know about, sounds that are created specifically for the audience. There are usually two kinds of these uh, sounds that the characters don't hear. The first kind is called voiceover, which is when somebody talks, but none of the characters can hear them. So maybe you have someone speaking directly to the audience, or maybe you have a character who's thinking something and the other people don't know what they're thinking, but the audience has to know. So these sounds are added directly onto the image regardless of what's going on in the image. It's directly for the audience. Usually when you have a voiceover, at the same time, you will lower the volume of all of the other sounds to help the audience understand that this uh, dialogue, these uh, human words are not part of the story itself. They are directly to the audience. The other kind of sound that characters can't hear is called the score, otherwise known as background music. Uh, background music, again, can either be music that already exists. Maybe you will take a pop song. Maybe you'll take some Beethoven and add it to a scene uh, for some kind of purpose. The score could also be original. You hire a composer to write music for this movie. And composers usually write music after the movie has generally been put together so that they can understand the structure and the feeling of the overall movie so they know what kind of music to make for the movie. Uh, and then once the music is out, maybe the film will be adjusted some in some places to fit the music better. So it's a back and forth process. Uh, there are even some movies where the composer uh, talks with the director and gets an idea of the movie and they make the music first and then the director puts the movie together according to the music. Sometimes this also happens. Usually these movies uh, emphasize the score and the music uh, very much and the effect that the music has on emotion. So how do you use background music in a movie? 
the simplest and most boring way is to help the audience understand the feeling of a scene or a situation. And I say this is boring because if your movie is good, the audience doesn't need music to understand the feeling and what's going on. Uh, so usually music is used in this way for like the most popular kinds of movies where the audience is not expected to really think hard about what's going on. They see the events, they hear the words, they hear the music, and their feeling naturally goes along uh, with the movie. Other times, music can be used uh, to as a kind of irony, feng si, to give a different perspective on the same situation. If you've ever seen a movie where like people are getting killed, but the music is happy and beautiful, uh, you know what I mean. Right. The, the fact that the music does not match the situation gives you another feeling about how the movie is talking about this situation. Uh, and then finally, we should remember that you don't have to have music. Silence is always an option. Even some movies where the situation is not very clear or the emotion is not very clear, the director may choose to leave the interpretation open to not help the audience understand what is going on. Because maybe not knowing is part of what the film wants to tell you. Maybe the film is trying to say not everything can be fully understood. Uh, and if you choose to use uh, like pop songs for your movie, you should try. You can think about um, whether the songs fit the era or the year. So if you're making a movie that's set in like 2005, uh, you can think about using music only from 2005 or 2004 and nothing after 2005. And uh, that way it would help you build the world of the movie. For people who were aware of culture and music in the year 2005, your movie would be more realistic to them. And it would also help uh, us feel the same as the characters. Even though the characters can't hear that music, it helps put us in that world because the music is from the same time as the characters. Uh, uh, one thing I do want to warn you to not do uh, unless you have no choice, is please try not to use music to scare someone or to make someone cry. Uh, if you've ever seen like a big drama film and the ending is like it makes you want to cry, most likely it's partly because of the music. But again, if your movie is really good, uh, your audience will cry even without uh, like music to help you cry. I personally think that's a very cheap thing to do. And of course, scaring people. We are going to watch a horror film later this semester, and the music is very scary. But it's not simply like a sudden boom to, to scare you. Like the music is part of the atmosphere, fun way, and feeling of the movie. That's okay. But please don't suddenly add like a, a loud burst of music just to scare people with no other meaning. Again, that's uh, not a very meaningful use of music. Uh, and last week when we were talking about editing, we also mentioned that sound editing can help the audience get from one scene to the next uh, if when the image changes, the sound continues, or if the sound changes before the image changes, the it will better help the audience to follow the change in image and in story. So that's the sound. Do you have questions? OK, um, next week after the movie, not before the movie, next week after the movie, I will explain the midterm exam. And I will guide you through thinking about the midterm exam question. Uh, so you don't want to miss that. This week, um, 
I have already divided you into six groups for your final project. Uh, so I want to give you a bit more time this week to meet your group members and to begin discussing uh, how to start your project and if you have any ideas for your final project. Uh, so uh, please come back to watch this week's movie at 12.35. This week we're watching a science fiction movie. Uh, now, science fiction films are often put together with fantasy films. Uh, in literature, there's a bigger difference. In literature, science fiction is often considered like more logical, more realistic if these things happen in the future. But in movies, the difference is not as big because we're you can say that every movie is a fantasy. So science fiction movies are basically fantasy movies set in the future. Uh, the sci-fi author Ar uh, Arthur C. Clarke once said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So science fiction movies are basically magic that pretends to be technology. Uh, so when we watch a sci-fi movie, we can think about uh, why does the film develop technology in this direction? How does this future technology change human society and how does it not change human society generally speaking a sci-fi film will often uh, give the idea that the the way that we do things has changed but the reason that we do things uh, remains the same so like our technology is more advanced, but we are still people with desires and fears and hopes and dreams and cowardice and bravery and things like that. Uh, this week we're watching a movie called Ad Astra in Chinese is Xing Ji Jiu Ren. Starring Brad Pitt. Uh, I think the use of sound in, in this movie is quite interesting, so that's why we're watching it this week. Uh, the director is James Gray. He has made a few movies. They are all beautiful, but uh, when you really think about his movies, they don't exactly make sense. They like they make like ninety five percent sense, and then there's five percent that really is just nonsense. Uh, so it, you can think about like which parts of the movie feel like they could happen or they make sense, and which parts are just pure fantasy for the purpose of making a movie. OK, uh, so remember to come back at 1235.